Number one asks us to find an equation that's equivalent to the equation 6x plus 9 equals 12. So remember, you can perform operations to this equation as long as you do it to both sides of the equal sign. And so A, if we take a look at the difference from A to this equation, we see that the X has changed. Um, and so we could think about dividing by 6 to get that X reduced. But when we do that, the 9 would have to be reduced as well. And we would have to do 12 divided by 6, which would be 2. So this is not reduced proportionally. So that is not going to be equivalent. Number two, when we take a look at the 2x, first of all, I don't see an x on the other side. If I did, we'd be subtracting the x to both sides. So for this one, I'm seeing that they divided the 6x by 3 because 6 divided by 3 is 2. So then we want to see if they did the same thing to the rest of the terms. And 9 divided by 3 is 3 and 12 divided by 3 is 4. So this one is equivalent. It's just divided both sides by 3. Um, and then this one just said which equation. So there's only one equation. So we know B is the answer, but I'll still take a look at these others. For C, um, we divided by 2 to the 6x. Dividing the 9 by 2 would give us 4.5, and this one stayed the same, so that's not going to be good. In this next one, the 6x stayed the same, and then these two just swapped places, which we can't do. These could kind of switch places, except for you'd have to subtract a 9 to both sides so that the 9 is off of this side. And then you'd need to subtract 12 to both sides so that you get rid of the 12 here because that would be 0. So if they swap places, they're also going to change signs, which didn't happen here. So D is not equivalent. Number two, select all equations that have the same solution as this equation. So very similar to what we looked at in the last slide, just a different way to say that. So now we're looking at same solution. So in part A, we see that um, to take 3x to the 15x, we would be multiplying by 5. So let's see if we multiply everything by 5 here. So 3 times 5 is 15x. Negative 12 times 5 is negative 60 and 24 times 5 is 120. That is the same equation as we have in A, so those are going to have the same solution. For B, and let me erase this. For B, we see we just have the 3x here, so we've gotten rid of this negative 12. So in order to get rid of this negative 12, we want to make it a 0. And to do that, we would add 12. And if we add 12 to one side, we need to add 12 to both sides. So negative 12 plus 12 is 0, so we just have 3x. And then 12 plus 12 is 36, not 12. So part B is wrong, or not the same solution. But we see part C is what we have, so that one would be good. D, it says x minus 4 equals 8. I'm just going to rewrite this equation so I can leave that other stuff there. Um, so we see that this is reducing kind of each term here. So in order to reduce this 3x to an x, we would have needed to divide by 3. So that means we would want to divide everything by 3 to keep it equivalent. 3 divided by 3 is 1x, so 1 times x. Negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4. And 24 divided by 3 is 8. That is what we have for D, so this would be equivalent. Um, then part E, we see that the 3x here goes up to a 12. So that means that this got multiplied by 4. However, that's the only thing that changed. 
And in order for this to be equivalent, everything would need to multiply by four. So we'd have to multiply three X by four. We'd have to multiply negative 12 by four and we'd have to multiply 24 by four. So you can't just change that X term and keep the solutions the same. Number three, Jada has a coin jar containing nickels and dimes worth a total of $3.65. The equation 0.05N plus 0.1D equals 3.65 is one way to represent this situation. Which equation below is also equivalent to this? So in this case, it looks like we changed the nickels from like pennies or dollars, portions of a dollar, five cents, we write as 0.05, to actually just saying five. So five cents per nickel, but this would say one cent per dime. And dimes are 10 cents, so this is not going to be equivalent. And really what they did was they're trying to multiply this whole thing by 100. So 100 times 0.05 is five, 100 times 0.1 is 10, and then 100 times 3.65 would be 365. So this would be represented in pennies instead of dollars. So then we can see that B would be wrong because we have 365 with a 0.5 and a 1. C, we have 5 per nickel, 10 per dime equals 365. That's the equation we just wrote here. And then D would be wrong because it moved the 3.65 to 365. Number four, select all equations that have the same solution as this equation. So for part A, so A and B are very similar, right? They've got the 2x. So we have to see which one of these 10 or 20 is correct. So in order to kind of get rid of this negative five, we would have to add five to both sides. And that's because then we just have two X, negative five plus five is zero, and then 15 plus five is 20. And then two X plus zero is just two X. So A is incorrect, but B would be correct. For part C, we're taking, they tried to take the two out here, right? So they took the two outside the parentheses. So if we multiplied this back in, we would need to distribute it to both terms. And then that would be two X minus 10 equals 15. Well, that's not equivalent because we have this minus 10 as the only thing that's different. So C is not correct. For D, they made this side of the equation zero. So let me write down the original equation. So they took the right side here and they made it zero, which means they subtracted 15 from this side. So that means we're gonna have to subtract 15 from the left side as well. So then we would have the two X, negative five and negative 15 is negative 20. 15 minus 15 is zero. So 2x minus 20 equals zero is equivalent to our original. Then in part E, we have 4x minus 10 equals 30. So everything has kind of gotten bigger here. And really 4x from 2x is just double. Negative five times two gives us negative 10. And 30 times 2 gives us, oh, sorry, 15 times 2 gives us 30. So all we did was multiply 2 to each of these. And then we got 4x minus 10 equals 30. So E is equivalent. Then in F, they switch the sides of these, which is fine. So it's okay for us to go from 2x minus 5 equals 15 and flip-flop the sides. So just bring the 15 to the left and then move the 2x minus 5 to the right. This is okay. This isn't what they did though because then they flip-flopped the 2x and the negative 5 and we cannot do that because we can't switch numbers over subtraction. 
because the negative goes with the five. So it would have had to have been negative five with a positive two X. So subtraction is not commutative. You can't switch the order of it. So we can switch the sides, but it's switching this order that was the problem. Number five, the number of hours spent in an airplane on a single flight is recorded on a dot plot. The mean is five hours and the standard deviation is approximately 5.82 hours. The median is four hours and the IQR is three hours. The value 26 is an outlier that should not have been included in the data. So this number way out here should not have been included. So it's gonna, so it's asking you the mean, which now that you removed this, this data is symmetric. So the mean is gonna be right in the middle. So it's right in between three and four, meaning that that's gonna be 3.5. And that means the mean is gonna be 3.5 as well. Or sorry, the median. So the mean and the median are right in the middle there. Now, for the standard deviation and the interquartile range, you're going to want to calculate um, some statistics on that. So you're going to want to do your one variable statistics in your graphing calculator or on GeoGebra. So I've done that in previous videos, so I'm just going to write down what it is here. So the standard deviation ended up being 1.5. Your IQR... So your two quartiles were five and two. So then when you subtract those, you would get three. But again, you'd want to type those into the GeoGebra spreadsheet, into your graphing calculator, or however your teacher has shown you how to do your statistics on those. Number six, a basketball coach purchases bananas for the players on his team. The table shows the total price, P, of N bananas. Which equation could represent the total price in dollars for N bananas? So we think about like we buy a certain number of bananas, right? And however many we purchase, we need to take however much they cost times the number we bought. So this should be the cost of the banana. And when we look here, the only equation that is a cost times N would be part A. So then check it out. So see if 7 times 0.59 equals 413, and it does. 8 times 0.59 equals 4.72. 9 times 0.59 equals 5.31. And 10 times 5.9 equals 590. It wouldn't make sense for us to have a cost of our bananas equals some number minus how much we purchase. Okay, you're not going to subtract how many bananas you purchase. You're also not going to take your 590 divided by N to get your cost. Okay, this is saying our total purchase is 590 divided by the bananas. So that would mean if we bought one banana, it's costing us $5.90, where if we bought 10 bananas, it's costing us 59 cents. That's going down in cost. So this makes no sense. And we wouldn't be purchasing like 10 bananas and then adding 59 cents or taking 100 bananas plus, plus 0.59. So 59 cents per banana would be the equation that makes sense there. Number seven, Kieran is collecting dimes and quarters in a jar. He collected $10. So far in dimes and quarters, the relationship of the dimes and quarters is represented by this equation. Select all values, D comma Q, so dimes and quarters. So the first number is dimes, the second number is quarters. That could be solutions to this equation, meaning that they equal out to $10. So we would be taking 0.1 here and multiplying by 100 for the number of dimes that he has, and then 25 cents times zero quarters. So 0.1 times 100 is 10, and then zero dollars in quarters equals $10. So this would be a true statement. Next one, we would have 0.1 times 20, and we would have 0.25 times 50, and that would be 
um, two dollars in dimes and twelve fifty in quarters, which would be over our ten dollars. And then we would continue this process for each of these other ones, okay, multiplying these out, and we would get five dollars in dimes here and five dollars in quarters. That equals ten. So here we would end up with zero dollars in dimes and then 100 times 0.25 would give us 25. So that's too many, that'd be $25. Here we'd have 10 times 0.1, which would be $1. And 36 times 25 cents would be $9. And this would give us $10. So that would be a solution as well. Number eight, here's a graph of an equation. Select all coordinate pairs that represent solutions, meaning that they're gonna be on the line. So for A, we'd be at two. So go two in the X direction, three, negative three in the Y direction. That's on our line, so this is a solution. B is the point four, zero. So go four in the X direction, zero in the Y. That's on our line, so that's a solution. 5, negative 1, so 5 in the X, down 1 in the Y is not on the line. So that is not a solution. 6 is 0 and then down 6, so 0 in the X, negative 6 in the Y, that is on our line. And then our final one here is the point 2, 3. So 2 in the positive x direction, 3 in the positive y direction is not a solution. Number 9, Jada bought some sugar and strawberries to make strawberry jam. Sugar costs $1.80 a pound and strawberries cost $2.50 a pound. Jada spent $19.40. Which point on the coordinate plane could represent the pounds of sugar and strawberries that Jada used to make jam? So we want the one that would be the solution to this. So that would be B, the one that is on the line. 